Hello students, welcome back to my channel Mind Your Exam. So in this video, we would be studying about the Python standard library provided by the Python programming language. And we would also be studying about some of the functions that are present in the Python language so that we can better understand uh, what functionalities are already available to us and what can be it utilized for. Okay. So first of all, let us understand what is a library in a Python language. So in Python, library is a collection of predefined functions or as we have studied earlier also in the previous videos, uh, predefined functions are also known as built-in functions which are provided by Python. Their definitions are already specified and if you need to use these definitions and these functions, you just need to write the function call. Okay, so they are predefined. They can be directly used by the users in their Python program and they are often also known as ready-made functions. All right. So most commonly used functions that we have already been using previously include the input function because we have never defined this function. We have never written the definition of this function. Similarly, the print function which we have been using continuously and other functions like the data conversion functions or uh, explicit data type conversion functions like int, float, string, str and so on. Okay, so some of the other functions that are present in the Python standard library which you can directly use by invoking these functions are uh, what we will be discussing today. So very quickly let's go through some important functions. What are their arguments? What are their return values and examples of each? Okay. So first we'll be starting with the absolute function. So the absolute function is basically used to find the absolute value of its argument. It takes a single argument as x and this argument can either be an integer or a floating point number. So when I say absolute value, it basically gives you the value of the argument without its sign. So if it is a positive number, the uh, return value will be the same as the argument. If it's a negative number, like in this case, minus 3.8, so the return value would contain the uh, argument without its sign that means 3.8 or plus 3.8 okay coming to the next function the next function is the div mod function so div mod function takes two parameters x and y both these parameters have either should either be integers or floating point numbers okay and what function actually is performed by the div mod finds out the question and the remainder after performing the division of x by y okay so the return value is a tuple in which the first term is the question and the second term is the remainder okay so when you apply the div mod functions and pass the arguments 5 and 2 what will you get you will get a tuple in which the first term would be the quotient of 5 divided by 2. The quotient is 2 and the remainder is 1. Okay. Coming to the next question, next function provided by the Python standard library is the max function. Now max function can take, take two types of arguments. Either it can take a comma separated uh, it, either it can take comma separated values which are either integer or float numbers or it can take a sequence now that sequence can be of any sequence data type it can be a list string and so on okay so in either case whether you provide a comma separated values or whether you provide a sequence the max function would find out the maximum value or the highest value out of all its arguments so if it's a sequence it will find out the maximum or the largest value that is that are out or the largest value present in the sequence so uh, uh, for example if i give two values separated by commas max of 5 comma minus 10 the highest or the largest value among these two arguments is 5 so the return value would be 5. Now if I pass a sequence, see in this case a string I am passing. So how will the Python interpreter find out the largest value? 
as we have seen previously also in terms of string we compared the characters based on their ascii values <clears throat> okay so uh, the ascii value of a capital ca capital alphabet letter uh, is more it increases from a to z so the when you compare capital a and when you compare capital z the values will increase sequentially and among x y z which is a string provided as the argument here the highest uh, value or the character having the highest ascii value is z so the string z is written okay now coming to the next function the next function is uh, an opposite of the max function which is the min function so it will also take similar types of arguments either a sequence or a comma separated values the values should either be int or float and the sequence can be list or string any sequence data type okay so uh, the return value is the smallest value among all the values that have been provided as arguments and uh, when we take an example here in this case we have provided the string since now it is very important for you to remember that the ascii value of capital letters is smaller than the ascii value of a uh, lower case letters that is why the letter having the smallest ascii value is s so the string it should be coming in string it should be quotes with s will be returned okay capital s next function is the power function or as we write pow okay now the pow function takes at least two arguments however you can specify more arguments so the uh, the rectangle brackets in which i have written z it shows that this is an optional argument the first two arguments x and y are compulsory you cannot skip them however uh, you can skip the last or the third argument which is specified in the rectangular brackets so if you have to write this function with three arguments you will directly write three values separated by commas you will not uh, specify the rectangle brackets in that case okay so all of these values can either be integers or floating point numbers and let's see how a uh, computation takes place if we have only two parameter sorry if we have only two arguments x and y yani there are two arguments x and y then the return value or the output of this function would be x raised to the power y if there is no third argument however if there is a third argument then what would be the output first x raised to the power y would be calculated then the resulting value would be uh, modulo by z okay so x raised to the power y modulo z would be the complete output so for example if we have the power function with three arguments 5 2 and 4 what will uh, the return value be the return value would be the first argument raised to the power of the second argument and this complete value that means 25 modulo 4 the third argument so that will give you 1 okay coming to the last sorry second last uh, function of this uh, python standard library there are many more functions i'm just giving you a gist of the functions that are most commonly used and you can use them directly if you know their syntax okay so the next is the sum function the sum function again it requires uh, a numeric sequence and what the numeric sequence is a compulsory argument and the second argument is an optional argument so when the uh, numeric sequence is present the output or the return value of the sum function is the addition of all the values that have been provided as arguments and if the optional argument is also present then in that case this optional arguments value is also added to the sum of the sequence the uh, first argument that is x okay so let's take an example suppose since it is a sequence it can be any type of sequence mostly it's a numeric sequence because you cannot add character uh, string characters you cannot find their sum the sum will not be an ascii value okay so it is a numeric sequence keep in mind okay the a numeric list of numbers 
so in this case if we are providing two arguments see there are two arguments because the first argument is a sequence containing two values and the second argument is a single value three so the output would be the sum of all the values that is one plus two plus three which gives you six okay the last function for that would be that we would be seeing today is the length function so the length function takes as input a single argument which can either be a dictionary or it can be any sequence data type so if you are providing a list which is a sequence then it will this function length will return the number of values that are present in that sequence if you are providing a dictionary again it will uh, return the number of key value pairs okay so it uh, this function returns the count of elements that are present in the argument and if uh, uh, we take an example here i am providing a sequence data type which is the string the string is happy so the length of this string would be 5 because there are 5 characters in it all right so that's all for today's video in the next video we would be studying about modules which are also a part of python standard library so uh, till we meet in the next video mind your exam thank you for watching if you understood the video please like and share with your friends